So today we're gonna to be taking a look at building a wireless core, and that means actually where to order the parts, how to build the board, and then of course flashing the firmware. Now, this video is actually sponsored by Typer Active that is owned by Nick, who created the Nice Nano, which is pretty cool. And he has a very cool tool on his website, Typer Active, that allows you to configure the board with all the parts you want in a very quick and simple way, and then just order them right there. So I'm gonna be actually showing you that tool first so you can get an idea of what the parts are and how the configurator works, because it's really nice and shows you a really nice preview of what you're gonna be getting. And then after that, we'll jump into building the board, and then flashing the firmware. So let's hop into the iPad and take a look. Here we are in Typer Active. Obviously, this is a keyboard shop, so you can buy classic stuff that a keyboard shop would have, but we're not interested in that. What we're interested in is this Build Now button or this Build tab. We're gonna just go Build Now, and you're gonna be presented with either a six column or a five column corn. I wanted the five column corn, so we're gonna configure that with chalk low profiles. We'll click Configure. And now you can see, and please do ignore any like weird selection issues here because I am doing this on an iPad. But what we'll see here is that we can kind of rotate just like that, that blue box. You can see here that this is just a PCB, so nothing too interesting yet. But what's really cool here is that as you add the parts, so say a case, which I went with a magenta one, you can see it starts to build out the board and you can kind of zoom in and really take a look at everything here, which is really nice. So like right here, this is the switch for the power button. This is the reset button. And then it also has pre-soldered on for the battery connectors here. And it's just a really nice way to kind of configure the board out. You can, of course, turn auto rotation on too, which I normally turn off because it will be annoying if it's rotating while you're adding parts. So I just turn that off. Then what we'll do is we'll go down here. We want, say, a display color. You can choose them if you just want a solid one. But I, of course, chose some displays. We're going to be putting nice views on this, which I've never worked with. And I'm excited to actually use those. I chose the actual cyan ones, if I can find them here. Um, cyan like that. You can see they have the cutout. And then it just kind of starts adding them on here so you can start building out this board and seeing what it will look like in real time. So I'll of course choose a battery. You can see the battery gets added right there, which is nice. And then we can come down here and I believe I went with the easy solder hot swap. I think this is the only part that is solder on this board. Otherwise, everything else is just kind of already assembled. Of course, we do have to select our nice nanos here. So it puts the nice nanos on there so you can kind of see them. Displays, I chose the nice views, which you can see adds them right there. And then I went with chalk white clickies. So then it adds those in. And then finally, I believe I went with white blanks. So you can see that that is the board there. And it's a very nice way to configure everything. You can see that it adds your price up and then you can just add everything to cart and order it. What we're gonna do now is actually open up the package I got from Nick. And we're gonna take a look and we're gonna start building this board because I believe there's only a few things you have to solder on and most of it is pre-assembled. So it's a pretty simple build and a really easy way to get into wireless cords. So let's do that now. So here's the right half PCB. And you can see that it's very clean and everything's pretty much pre-soldered on it. So we have all the hot swaps soldered on. We have the battery connector right here, the power switch, and then the actual reset button. You do also get a right and left half here. Just mentioning that you don't just get one half. You get both halves of the PCB, obviously. The next thing I want to talk about is the case. Here's the case. It's 3D printed. And you can see that it is a very beautiful 3D print, very high quality. And you can see basically no layer lines almost. I mean, obviously you see layer lines if you look close, but the bottom is that nice texture. It has like a textured plate he's probably printing it on. But obviously we get the case here with the FR4 plates right there. Chalk white clickies, which are very nice. I like those. We have our keycaps. So we have the one use, we have the homing, and then we have the 1.25s. So then of course we have our displays, the nice views. I'm very excited to use these because I've never used a nice view, but I've heard good things. I've seen a lot of good things. They use very low power draw, especially with a 110 mAh battery. These will come in handy. We, of course, have our batteries, which are just 110 Ma, and they have the little connector to plug into the PCB right there. Finally, we do have two nice nano controllers with the sockets in there that we won't actually use because we will be socketing the controllers with these right here. Then we have our covers for our actual controller and nice view right here with hardware in there to actually mount them. And then finally, we have a baggie of hardware and feet for the bottom. Now, let's just start building this. The first step for me, since I'm building a five column, is we're gonna have to actually snap off this six column here. And all you do to do that is you just grab it like so, and you basically just bend like that, and it pops right off. So you can see, we just do that. And there are PCBs all prepared. Now what you can do is you can just take the nice nanos and you can get rid of all this other stuff. You don't need these sockets because we're gonna be socketing them with proper socket headers. These are if you're soldering direct to the board, you'll use these, but we're not using these. So you grab your sockets, you take them, and you just pop them in right here. So the sockets just go in there like that. But what I like to do is just kind of grab them like that flip them upside down. Then we're just gonna solder each one of these on. The temperature doesn't matter so much for these. We will talk about temperature when we solder the controller in a second. But these here, you can solder them at 300C and you should be fine. What we're gonna do first is we're gonna just tack weld one of these on real quick and don't really worry about how straight the socket is. So we're just gonna put a little solder on it, like so, just a little bit. And then we can put pressure on here and then kind of reset the actual socket. So by doing that, we kind of put it in place so that it's ready to be aligned like so. I already soldered on the right half, but 
this is like that and then we'll of course go down to this last one here to kind of secure it more put a little bit of solder on it just a tiny bit then we want to put pressure on the board and then kind of get it back in there to get it seated and just like that that is tacked on now all you want to do is solder every single one of them on both sides now our sockets are all on there as you can see and the next step is we're going to put this down and we're going to take our pins and this part is very tedious and you have to be very careful because there's 24 pins you don't want to lose them and they're very small but what we're going to do is take a pair of tweezers we're going to grab a pin and we're going to start putting them in each one of these sockets here and then what you can use is something like this and very gently push it so it seats into that socket so you can see that that pin is in that socket now or each socket we have to do that same thing and then we can put the board on top so we'll go like this actually but we'll put that on there and then we can solder every pin to this so you can see that these are all on here now like so all the little pins we just want to take our controller and we want to place it face down so that means this way up this is the face so we face down like that and you can see that the pins are sticking out like so what we have to do is just solder each one of those to the controller. Now, the important thing to take note of here is that when soldering to the controller, specifically the Nice Nano, we want to keep our temperature around 270 to 300 C, but as low as possible because you can damage the chip if you apply too much heat. So I'm going to solder around 280, and that should be enough to get proper solder flow. What we're going to do now is actually mount the screen to it if you chose that option. Here is the screen, and you can see in here that it includes, of course, the Nice View display, and then it includes the actual header, and then the pins so we're going to do the same process we're going to take the actual headers or just pop them into the display section here now we're just going to solder the headers on and you can see that there is the header soldered on so they're soldered into there and there's the header the long pins they will go in there then you will take your view and put it right on top this one i'm not sure if it's the same as the controller but i am going to solder this at a lower temperature i'm going to do 280 again so what you're going to want to do is just kind of tack this first one on and then you want to position it so you want to heat it up position it but don't apply too much heat because then you can damage stuff apply enough heat to kind of get it in place you can come back in and do all the pins make sure your solder joints are nice and clean and then there you go what we have to do now is actually remove these parts so all we're going to do to remove the display is just simply wiggle it up it's very easy to do that one this is the tricky part and now the way i recommend to do this and you can choose to take my advice or not because it's a little sketchy with how i do it is i take a pair of tweezers like so and i very gently kind of remove it on the edges of the PCB. So you're going to see here that I can kind of get under here and gently begin to pry that, which is definitely not the best way to do this. But if you're careful, you can kind of start to get clearance there. And then the same thing here, and I'm just going to pry up on the PCB there where you can see there's no components. I'm just prying up on the actual PCB material. So I'm not hitting anything. So you can see I'm doing it there now Then I'll come back here. I'll do the same thing and then once you get enough clearance what you can do is just put it down and very gently just pop it out make sure not to bend your pins we're going to do this exact same process to the left half of the board I'm not going to do that on camera because I literally just have to do the same thing again we'll mount the battery mount the switches and then the board's pretty much done after we flash firmware now we're going to take our PCB and we're going to make sure that the switch is in the down position which is negative making sure that it is off and then we're going to simply take our battery and with a little notch we're going to put that up like so, and then we're going to simply route it like so. So you can see that that kind of slots in between the socket and everything there. What we're going to do now is hold this, the actual connector. And we're going to bend these wires, but you want to make sure that this switch here won't hit those wires. And you can see that one won't, then this one also won't. So what we can do now is actually grab our plate. And what we're going to do is just take one switch and we're going to align it in here and then push it into this socket right here. So you can see that kind of clicks into place. And then we're going to go to another corner over here, do the same thing. And you want to make sure you pull the plate up to actually click into the switch. So this part's always a little hard to do. But you just want to make sure that they actually click in and be careful not to actually break the plate because you can easily break it then what you're going to do is just do that for every single switch here so i'm going to do that and this will take a few minutes and you're going to want to make sure that they click in on every switch you're going to want to be pulling the plate and kind of pushing it in places to make sure they click take our controller we're going to just simply mount that here take your display mount that above it we're going to just grab our cover here with the hardware and we're going to first mount these standoffs to the actual board so we're going to flip it over grab a screw put that in here grab our standoff you can put that down take your cover now these screws don't need to be super tight they just need to hold that in place then you're going to grab your case 
and we're going to take the other baggie of hardware with the smaller standoffs and do the same process here. So now there's everything screwed in there. Now we just have to grab our keycaps here. Final thing we have to do is flip it over and you're gonna have these little feet here, which you just take them and I put them in the four corners. One there, one there, one there, one there. And then there's the right half and then there's the left half. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean up my big mess down here because you'll make a mess when you build boards. I'm gonna grab my computer and then I'm gonna show you how to flash firmware. So I'll be back in just a second. First thing you're gonna wanna do is go over to GitHub and you're gonna wanna create a new repository and you're gonna name it something like zmk-config dash corn view. I'm naming mine corn view because I already have a corn one. We're going to create that repository and then we can start actually getting the firmware on it. Next we're going to go to zmk.dev. We're going to click on get started. We're going to go to installing zmk. We're going to scroll down to where it says user config script setup and copy this command. We're going to then go over to a terminal. We're going to paste this command in here and hit enter. And then we're going to be, of course, building a corn. It's asking what board you're building. We're building a corn. So we're going to click 13 here, press enter, and it's going to ask the controller. We're using a nice nano V2. So we're going to click six, and then we're going to copy in the stock key map with yes. We're going to enter my GitHub username like so. And then we're going to do zmk-config-corn view because that's the repo I created. Hit enter. And then we're going to also go back over to GitHub. This is specific to my setup because I'm using SSH keys. I want to just copy this repo from here. And I'm going to just paste that into here. Now we're going to click yes again. It's going to clone it, do everything it needs to. Then we can just click open dot to open the directory here. So you can see it placed it here. What I'm going to do is just drag this to my desktop because it'll be easier to manage. So then I have it in here. And you can see this is our configuration. So what we're going to do is we're going to CD back to my desktop because that's where I just moved it. And then we're going to type code and then ZMK to open that inside of VS Code. Now, I'm not going to really go into how to actually set up your key map on ZMK because I already have the build that I like for my key map from another video, which I'll link. And of course, you want to set up your key map how you want. And you can pretty much read the docs and figure that out. But what we do have to do since we're using these displays here is we have to actually modify build.yaml. And all you have to do is for the boards on the shields is you have to add this line right here nice view adapter and nice view so we're just going to add that to both shields we're going to save that and then the other thing i'll mention while i'm in here is that you can jump into corn conf and you can kind of give your board a name i'm naming this corn view of course and this has to be under 16 characters otherwise you'll encounter issues and then the other two things i add is that i set my steep sleep to 30 minutes so it won't go into deep sleep until 30 minutes just to save a little battery and then i also increase the bluetooth power so it has a better connection you can or cannot add this is up to you really it depends on what you encounter after this all you're going to do is just push this up to github you'll be jump over there you will see under the actions tab that i have my firmware here so I'm just going to jump into here. I'm going to download my firmware. I'm going to open it up real quick. And then I'm just going to drag these files onto my desktop. You can see that I have my left and my right one. We're going to grab the left half of the board. We're going to plug it in and then we're going to hit the reset button. So we're just going to grab the left half and we're going to just drag that to the nice nano. It will automatically flash it and then eject it once it's done. Just like so, you can see it's actually copying it now. Want to make sure you do not unplug this during this process. You can see that we now have a display on there. So all we're going to do now is unplug this one. And we're going to grab the right half. We're going to do the same exact process. We're going to plug it in. We're going to reset it like so. And then we're going to want to take the right half of the firmware. We have our battery indicator and all that good stuff on there. And now what you want to do finally is you want to unplug this one. You want to power them both on. So we'll power on the right half. We'll power on the left half. And then you're just going to click both of the reset buttons simultaneously. That will pair them, and then they should be paired. There we go. We got a check mark on there. Then we should be able to see corn view. We'll connect to it. And now, if I'm right, there we go. The board is now working. That is all you really need to do to set up a wireless corn, basically. Pretty simple, I think. Not really much to it. Um, what I want to do now is just do a typing test, because obviously what would be a keyboard build video without a typing test and then we'll talk a little bit more about it, and I'll be back in a few.
that's the entire process of building a wireless corn from start ordering the parts from building the actual board itself and then of course flashing the firmware at the end i have to give a huge shout out over to nick at typer active because it's awesome that he sent me a board for this video here i really appreciate that but also the tool that he made is very useful i haven't seen much stuff like that in the keyboard world where you could just kind of dive into something and configure a board and actually get a real 3d preview of what you're getting because most of them they just do like a image of like say if you get the pink case this is what it will look like instead of being like hey you can see the components inside that's what's so cool about that tool but with that said i think the board came out great here it is reversed you can kind of see it here i think it came out really nice i really like it i like the displays on it i'm going to actually be bringing this board back and forth to work with me because it obviously has the switches on it unlike my other core in which i will link that video when i built my first wireless core and i didn't add switches to it so it's just always active so it can mistype stuff on like my iPad and whatnot, which is a little annoying. But this one also has the displays on it, which I do have to dive deeper into to see what I can actually do with those because I think there's other stuff you can do and they look really nice and they should draw really low power so it shouldn't like destroy the battery life. But with that said, if you do have any questions, make sure to ask down below and I'll do my best to answer them. As usual, if you did enjoy this, maybe like the video, maybe subscribe, you know, do those YouTube things. And other than that, thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.